Hey friends, welcome to Chine Coaching. Rob here. In this video, we're going to address the big announcements that came out yesterday about Trump's new H-1B visa policy proposals. Um, yeah, there's some big news, some potential big changes. Should you guys worry, we're going to break that all down and give you some quick important tips. So at Chine Coaching, we're all about helping people be successful in their cross-cultural journeys. And if you're an international student professional, this could have a really big impact on you. So first things first, this is not official. Okay, this is a proposal, and which was just proposed, I think, yesterday, and is going to be officially published tomorrow um, with the U.S. government, and then it's going to have 60 days for review. And so there's time to review, rebuttal, court cases, and so this is not an official thing yet, but I want to share what's been proposed and the impacts it's going to have on you guys. So this DHS proposal, the Department of Homeland Security, is called Strengthening the H-1B Non-Immigrant Visa Classification Program. That is what it's about. And if you are a current H-1B visa holder, this does not impact you. This is only going to be for new applications. So things like an H-1B extension, H-1B change of status, H-1B amendments, and an H-1B transfer. So Kenneth T. Cuccinelli, the acting Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security, that's a tongue twister, said he expects the changes to be cut by one third of the number of petitions filed annually by these coveted H-1B visas. So if this happens, it means H-1B visa applications will probably decrease by one third. So this is a big impact. Immigration lawyers and experts predict that also these changes are gonna be swiftly challenged in the courts because they bypass the normal regulatory processes. So there's kind of Several changes, kind of four ones that I really want to focus on and help you guys understand that's what's going to happen if this does become official in 60 days in December. So the first one is the increase in the minimum salary or kind of a wage level increase. They want to make it more expensive, kind of almost like a tax for U.S. companies to hire these foreign labor and H-1B visas. So one example of this kind of changes I read is that of offering a minimum salary of 120 k 130000 for like a doctor in a clinic in northeastern Pennsylvania, which considered an unserved area, they would have to pay more like $195,000 or $200,000 per year for a foreign physician on an H-1B visa. So this is a huge hike. Again, um, for tech jobs in the Bay Area, tens of thousands of dollars, it's gonna cost more to pay the salary on an H-1B visa. So this is probably one of the biggest impacts is the minimum salary increase or kind of a minimum level for wage increase. Second change in this proposal is redefining skilled labor. Kind of H-1B is always viewed as highly skilled or special qualifications um, to achieve these and the special type of work they're doing. It's viewed as that there's people not locally that can do these jobs, so I have to bring in specialized. So this is gonna be more strict, more scrutinized, considering things like expertise, qualifications, degrees, work experience. So they're gonna set a higher bar, a higher standard for specialized jobs, and if you qualify for that to be able to get an H-1B visa. The third big change in this proposal is redefining the employee-employer relationships. They wanna make sure these things are real. These are real jobs with real companies. Um, this is again trying to fight against illegal immigration or false visas, but there's gonna be more strict scrutiny, kind of audits, and really gonna check and see if you're really working for this company, kind of what is the management relationship, how many check-ins are happening daily or weekly with this H-1B employee and the company, your team they're a part of. Does the company provide resources and benefits or is this kind of more like a contract job? All these things are gonna be factors that are gonna be considered and checked in on on this new H-1B policy. Kind of the fourth and another big change is the length of these visas and kind of the eligibility. So you might've heard that, oh no, H-1B visas are only for one year now, but this is only for a third party companies, third-party clients. So these are not direct hires to U.S. American companies. So a couple examples of third-party are kind of offshore companies. A company like an Infosys, Convergys, Tata Consulting, TCS, you know. Um, if an American company hires someone from a third-party company, that's what qualifies for the one year. Or within America, if they hire from a consultancy or kind of contract labor instead of a direct hire into an Amazon, Facebook, Uber, you know, whatever American company it is, that's third party. So only one year for these third party kind of contractual works where again, um, cheaper labor, more cuts of the salary happening. But if it's a direct hire, then I think it's going to be now three years will be the eligibility. And again, these can be renewed year after year after three years, but definitely shrinking down the eligibility of what these uh, H-1B visas will be good for. All right, so time to kind of share my thoughts. Again, I think this is a lot of political rhetoric. Um, man, it's 
election season. I was disappointed at the things that happened in the summer with H1B and F1 students again during the pandemic. And you guys saw how quickly those things got smashed and shut down and fought against, you know, trying to force the international students to do in-person classes versus online or send them back. And that got squashed real quick. That got changed. And I think there's a lot of potential for this as well. There's going to be companies fighting for this. There's going to be companies fighting for you guys because honestly, H1B and OPT jobs are super important for the American economy. And if these go away, that's actually going to hurt the economy. All the statistics are out there. I don't need to reiterate those kind of things. This is, again, just political rhetoric trying to save American jobs, which is a good, important thing. But this isn't the best way to go about that. This isn't the issue. Again, don't worry unless it's official. Again, this is a proposal. It can change. It is not official. So only worry if it becomes official, you know, two months from now in December. Again, most H-1B visas are not stealing American jobs. The vast majority of Americans are not even close to being qualified for these kind of jobs that H-1B people are doing. So I would not worry about that. A couple things to, uh, I want to share again is a federal judge in San Francisco last week blocked the Trump administration from enforcing its ban against many of the biggest U.S. companies bringing in foreign workers under the H-1B and other visas. So again, Judges, companies are fighting for these things. Changing the requirements on H-1B and other work visas will only hurt American companies that depend on high-skilled workers who fill critical positions while American works to grow its domestic pipeline with STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math. Another little quote thing I found, John Blitchie, maybe, executive director of the immigration policy of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, another one of the plaintiffs in this suit, said, we're still evaluating these proposals, but both of these rules have the potential to inflict serious harm upon American companies. So again, if these things happen, it's going to be bad news for American companies, American jobs, American co economy. So I think it's going to change. I do not think it will become official. That's my hunch but let's see what happens. Again, I wanna say thanks to um, UDJ and Gora. They've put out some great videos and posts and content. Go check those out if you wanna learn more about this. And thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna keep you guys up to date when I find out more about this. Thanks for all your questions and people sending me articles. I really appreciate that as well. And don't forget to subscribe to Chai and Coaching and connect with us online on social media. We wanna keep helping you guys succeed in your cross-cultural journeys. So thanks for tuning in, friends, and we'll see you next time at Chai and Coaching. Cheers.